Hey everyone, and welcome to group break number 115. Today we got another uh, 12 box hobby case of 2020-2021 Upper Deck Series 2. So we're hoping for the Stutzlas, the Caprice Offs, and everything else in between. Uh, but yeah, good luck everyone again onto the Team Rams. Three times on the names, three times on the teams. Good luck. And let's have some fun. Uh, let me know in Twitch chat what you think we're going to pull. Uh, what you think our best pull is going to be for the tonight's break and uh, I mean I guess you can let me know after the team runs as well But yeah, just let me know. Uh, I think we're gonna get I think we're gonna get like a top five young gun French parallel and Like an above average uh, Young guns exclusives. Those are my those are my calls. But anyways three times on the names once twice and thrice whether or not they'll come true, we will have to find out, but I got a good feeling about this break. You know, the case has kind of been marinating for a couple days. Three times on the teams. Once, twice, and thrice. And we've had some really good pulls lately, so hopefully we can keep that up. All right, here we go. Uh, Robert, you've got the Flyers, Livio with the Ducks, Brian Roberts with the Panthers, Rocky, you've got the Habs, Matt with the Canucks, Maxime with the Hurricanes, Danny with the Flames, Gabriel, hey, you didn't get Nashville, you got Buffalo this time, uh, Carl with the Rangers, Callum, you've got Chicago, uh, Rocky with Columbus, Robert with the Jets, Carlos with the Sharks, Jordan with the Lightning, Callum with the Oilers, uh, Corey with the Leafs. Michael with the New York Islanders. Kevin, you've got the Pittsburgh Penguins. Robert, you've got the Senators. Mark, you got the Yotes again. Uh, Ryan with the Predators. Angelo with the Avalanche. Edward with the Stars. Maxime with the Gold Knights. Robert, you've got the Robert Copeland. You've got the Bruins. Uh, Chris with the Devils. Mark, you got the Kings. Danny with the Wild. There you go. Uh, Brent with the Red Wings, Mike with the Washington Capitals, and Robert with the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Nashville's not, like, they're not the worst team. Um, that, I would have to say, would go to, honestly, probably Boston. Um, LA is one of those teams that could have been legitimately the best team, and now they're not great either because they don't have any rookies in this but um yeah all right let's uh get the order the list thing up here i need to do a mock of extended checklist over the next little bit too that's uh that's on my to-do list PNG final NHL team viewer. Mark, I don't know what it is. I think you used all your Rangers luck in that one break. <laughs> you it's just like the past couple of randoms for you haven't haven't gone your way. So Ooh, I guess I'll leave the team viewer back up. But yeah, allow a couple minutes for trade, so. Um, like, honestly, I I don't know. I feel like we might get some, I feel like something spicy is coming tonight, so. I want to say tonight's night we pull a Fanimation, but every time I say that, we never get it. So tonight is not the night that we're pulling a Fanimation. Uh, but yeah, a couple minutes for trades. Uh, if there's literally no transaction or like, um, like no one really moving on it, then uh, we'll get going here. Let's see, what are some other things that we could see? Oh, I could get like a Doughty Fanimation for uh, the Kings. That would be something. Oh. Uh -huh. What are the other rare cards? The MVPs we know. Um, rookie breakouts. Did we hit one yet? I don't know if we have yet. Uh, 
Arizona for Blues. I don't know if he's still in here. Uh, but give it a couple minutes. I will just start getting the boxes unpacked and then uh, we'll go from there. Um, here, let's go. Uh, no, Series 2 is actually better from the top now that I think about it. It doesn't really matter too much. Because it's three by three, there we go. Whew. All right, middle, now get in there. There we go. Ugh. These should just slide out nicely. Beautiful. And there's your empty case. Oh yeah, it's a it's a big pack night. It is a uh, I pre-made myself dinner yesterday <laughs> night, so I've started to be a little bit wiser when it comes to series one, and series two breaks. So. Uh, <laughs> All right, I think we're all good. Uh, oops, don't need to click that. Here we go. Let's uh, yeah, let's get something cool tonight. So here we go. Oh, these are not centered, and that's gonna bug me a little bit. Wait. Uh, dinner. I mean, if people want a nice little salad with some uh, some red peppers, some tomatoes, and some cucumbers, uh, a little bit of spinach, a little bit of romaine, Caesar salad dressing, and some uh, shaved turkey. By all means, I will digitally share it to you. It'll be purchasable as an NFT. I'm joking by that, but here we go. Box one. I really want to see just something sick tonight. Like, again, calls are, let's, let's put a name on the young guns. I think we'll get a Hoaglander French is my guess. Hoaglander Cousins on the French. Like, kind of player of that caliber. And then uh, a young guns exclusive of, like, at least a top half rookie. So, like, you know, someone who's above average. <laughs> to get a lot for that NFT. Oh man, I mean the NFT market's just crazy. So, all right, here we go. Pack one. We got uh, Ant Whistle for Chicago on the rookie portraits. And Callum, congrats on literally your like full box of Series Two hobby, because you got Chicago and they legitimately will average about. 24 cards a break, a little bit over actually. Uh, Crawley for the Rangers on the Young Guns. Yeah, former Bulldog on the uh, Ent Whistle. Next up, Canvas, retired Canvas of Bondra for the Capitals. I'd say, uh, you know, a nice little like appetizer canvas. I like that they highlight the older players cause you know, it's just, they don't really always get cards made of them and it's a cool way to kind of incorporate them into collecting, give some people like at least some names to go back and look at type of thing. So uh, legacy for the Oilers, that's a, that's a good sign. Normally he's with Kaprizov, I want to say. Ooh, we got a we got a die cut already. Coming up, something spicy. Uh, Kivaranta for the Stars to 250 on the MVP top prospects. Love of love these cards. 
nice and shiny. Too bad it wasn't. Actually, I think Robertson was just straight up an MVP. I think so. But yeah, I love those. That is honestly like again. Uh, we haven't. Maybe in a couple weeks we'll do another couple boxes of MVP just to get some more of those. Um, but just love the cards. Sale value wise, not the best, but they're always like people are always just like, oh, those are really cool, and then they're just like, oh, they're just MVP. That's not really a big deal. I messed up my piles here. That makes more sense. Uh, McNiven for the Habs on the blue OPG rookie. So, it is, uh, yeah, they're just, they're cool. Like, again, opening that up in a hobby box of series two, you're just like, wow, that's sick. Uh, Zamula for the Flyers on the portraits and French variation of Nick Paul for the Senators. But like, you know, you talk to people about MVP and they're just like, yeah, it's like, it's an okay product. Like it's kind of low end, but like people are excited about cards like that and you get them in that. So, Ent Whistle for Chicago on the Young Guns. It's one of those funny little things about like card collecting is that sometimes there's some cards that like, if they're outside of that set, people like start to look at it and like kind of be like, that's a really cool card. But because they're in like a lower end set, people aren't as excited. Uh, Nugent Hopkins for the Oilers on the canvas. The Nuge. And next up, Regula for Chicago on the Young Guns. Yeah, Chicago has is just so good in this. San Jose is pretty consistent as well, but Chicago really is just the money team. Uh, for Carolina, ooh, Zingle's fallen on the clear cut. I just got to... There we go. So one clear cut out of the way. Retired canvas, MEP top prospects. So getting a whole bunch of like cool subsets in here. Nothing like major, but uh, send for the Devils on the rookie. Next up, you'll see for the Predators on the award winners. It's definitely going to be a playoff race between the uh, the Stars and Predators. I think Chicago's... Is Chicago still somewhat in that, or are they kind of out? I think it's mainly just going to be Stars and Predators down the stretch, but going to be a nice little sprint there. Uh, Nature's for the Hurricanes on the canvas. I think Predators have the point lead, but Stars' points percentage-wise are slightly higher, so it'll be close. It'll be like the only division right now where there's actually going to be a legit playoff race it feels like uh mcniven for the habs i guess the um uh, the what division is it it's not the it's not the east it's the it's not the central i i forget what it's called uh mcleod for the oilers on the retro the one with the bruins and rangers in it is that the do they stay with like atlantic or something like that i forget what it's called um, but yeah, that's, uh, going to be an interesting finish there as well. Skinner for the Oilers on the Young Guns. I mean, I guess the Canucks could make a push, but it's like very unlikely. And like, honestly, the two wins against the Leafs were great, but if they face like average goaltending, they, they aren't winning those games. Uh, Kivaranta for the Stars on the Rookie Portraits. The Mass Mutual East. Okay. Oh, right. It's the East, and then it's, like, the South or whatever for the... Uh, I forget. Yeah. It's just... It's one of those weird divisions where... Oh, yeah, no. It's the East, but the most Eastern teams are in the Central Division. Uh, Frank Kuz for the Avs on the Portraits. That's what it is. That's my favorite part about the divisions is that the geographically most eastern teams are not in the eastern conference they're in this or division they're in the central Burdine for the jets 
Yeah, Florida looks good. Uh, I mean, good coaching and then kind of got rid of some of their bad players, brought in cheap, good players on bargain UFA contracts. Olafson for the Sabres and Braden Point for the Stars on the Canvas and Dazzlers, respectively. So, like, you know, good job for uh, them there. Almost looks like, uh, you know, maybe not having Dale Talon there would have been a blessing. Laugh for the Rangers. There you go. First laugh on the OPG Rook. Extended's going to be nuts with all the... Uh, because you're going to have, like, Kaprizov, um, Stutzla, Hoaglander, a bunch of those, I think, in that for updates for OPG. At least, I think. Uh, Wool for the Leafs on the retro. Normally, that's where they'd put them. Well, I'd normally put them in this, but because of, you know, the tighter print lines, I get why. I think it's uh, Romanov Youngin for the Habs. So, I mean, good one. Not who I was expecting out of this box, but still solid. Uh, I believe the initial sell sheet had, uh, I think, 25. So I I feel like it'll be 24 in a checklist, um, just out of instincts. But I could be wrong there, so don't quote me on that. Ah, I just got to make a spot for the base quickly. One second. Almost forgot to. Well, I did forget to do that. So, just... Alright, that should be enough space. Let's get rid of the 130 center there. Get rid of these decoys that are used for sorting. And now we have the room for series 2. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, I don't think Zegras makes the cutoff, which means if he doesn't make the cutoff, that means um, Drysdale won't. Kaliev is going to be the biggest name, one of the biggest names in terms of like stuff. But yeah, like it, it's one of those things like it has the potential to be solid, but. We'll see. Uh, next year's Young Gun Crop, though, looking pretty spicy if they don't add those into Extended. So, because, uh, like, you'll have Zegris, you'll have Drysdale, you'll have, I mean, Swayman's doing crazy things for the Bruins. Spencer Knight debuted for the Panthers, so you got two good goalies. And the goalie markets are normally really, really strong. Um... Who else? You'll probably have Byfield. You'll have, um, who else has debuted here? I don't know. There's just going to be a bunch of talent. So it's exciting. Like, it'll probably be an exciting crop next year, even if the draft's a little bit lackluster. Uh, Harkins for the Jets. And, well, it's Vidimo for the uh, Habs on the French Young Gun. So I was wrong in my guess, but we still have another one. Still have another one. Uh, yeah, I think Caulfield will probably get his debut at some point. Um, who else? But, I don't know. It's a, It'll be solid. So, uh, Latunov for the Sharks. Uh, we have just another one of these random blank cards. Are they like golden tickets? <laughs> Yeah, Byfield, if he, if he debuts as well, like he should. Um, Akil Thomas probably should as well. So, uh, Rantanen for the abs on the canvas. But I'm excited for Byfield. I think Byfield's going to be a heck of a player. Uh, Hagel for Chicago. I think he's going to take off a little bit price-wise. He's a player to keep your eye on. I've said that the whole time. I haven't checked into what his secondary market is right now, but I think he's a good player to keep your eye on. Uh, for the Stars, rookie materials of Delandrea. Delandrea for the Stars on the rookie materials. 
uh, Krebs was this year. Who else is... God, I'm trying to refresh my prospect brain for like five minutes. Um, there are a lot of exciting prospects, though. So. Uh, Burke for the Yotes on the Marquee Rook. Lindstrom for the Red Wings on the Portraits. Yeah, I'll go back through and uh, check out who debuted this year and who doesn't have a young gun yet. Uh, Zegadulin for the Flames. And then just kind of piece it together with this year's checklist, see what we're kind of looking at for extended. So, Canvas of Rene for the Predators and Soderstrom for the Oats on the Dazzlers. Uh, Prisky for the Panthers. I definitely, like, Series 2 this year had so much potential to just be a nutty class. But unfortunately, like, obviously due to constraints and stuff. Dumbo for the Wild on the Retro. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, last... He'll have his retro, like, 0506 one, and I think that's going to be real cool. Uh, yeah, we'll see what they uh, do for the OHL. Gage Quinney for the Knights on the Young Guns. Obviously, it sucks to see, but at the same time, um, you look at what happened with Marco Rossi, who, very excited for, like, really good player, and, you know, he got COVID, and it looks like he'll be okay. Bennington for the Blues on the canvas. And, like, but he's was done. Like, um, he didn't pass the physical test. I don't know how he played in the juniors, to be honest. Um, like, you could tell he wasn't his normal self there. Gross for the Yotes on the Young Guns. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad that he's, like, it seems from the sound of things that he's recovering. But, like, just the stories from him, his family, it, it was really scary. Three, four. All right, we are missing a card in this pack. Uh, we're missing two cards in this pack, so no idea what's going on there. This is a box just in case I need it. It is, where's the code? Uh, 763. 763 but yeah uh it's one of those things just like it sucks but at the same time like hopefully they make exceptions for like 21 year olds um send on the blue for the devils but yeah. <laughs> i mean if we don't get something definitely we'll do an overtime pack but uh hopefully something there's like a patch or something hiding in this let you know for the sharks I'm not missing a variation or anything. It's just, I wonder what pack that we're actually missing. Cause we've hit, I think we hit the Dazzler's canvas. Well, there's a Hoaglander for the Canucks on the Young Guns. Yeah, I mean, at least the W, like the WHL kids, like they're getting to play a little bit, which is nice. Um, again, in bubbles, there's still been some positive tests and whatnot, but. Honestly, the biggest thing with the WHL this year has been the performance of their, like, 15-year-olds. Uh, Leslie with the Giants, the defenseman, who's just insane. And then, uh, obviously, Bedard. Uh, Berdeen for the Jets. So. But yeah, that's a bit, of a bit of a weird pack there. Don't know what's going on there. So, if something, like, is off over the entire case... Uh, Dumbo for the wild like I'll keep that in mind but like keep in mind that we might get like an extra hit in a later pack in the case because sometimes that how it works that's how it works out so uh, well that's a that's a pretty good program of excellence for the New York Rangers nice little Alexis Lafreniere I butchered that 
my friend here. Nice little program of excellence, doing his nice little selly. That, that's, that's, a, that's a good pull. That's a good pull for the Rangers. Uh, Kivaranta, you were the star of the playoffs last year. You can slide over. I mean, okay, if you're missing, if you're missing a card in a box, but you get that, you're kind of like, okay, I mean, yeah, it's not great, but it's still solid. Robertson for the lease. Yeah, uh, honestly, I don't know what we're missing. Uh, it could have been like a jersey card, but Ingram for the Predators on the retro. Let's go back through and uh, try to figure out what we uh, ended the last box on. Because we got the French in this one, right? Yeah. Uh, Sharon Govich for the Devils on the Young Guns. So uh, I'm just going to try to remember where we finished off. I think point was the last box. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, our French variation, I think, was missing. Right? Yeah, so let me double check the base. Oh no, the French variation was a Vedimo. Right, because we hit the young gun. So, I honestly don't know what was missing from that. Hmm. That's weird. But we did have the, um... We had the blank card again, so... Don't know. Uh, six young guns. Did we get six? We got uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and Hoaglander six. So we got all of our young guns. Um, Delandrea was that box too. I really don't know what we're kind of missing. I guess kind of like the utility slot. I don't know. All right, let's go... I mean, we're going across, so let's just keep going across. Yeah, that was, that was a weird... I mean, it was, like, it was a good box, but it was weird for sure. So... It's one of those just, like, you open it, you get that... Like, if you were to buy that single pack, you'd be rightly upset. However, that box as a whole was solid. So, I just don't know what it was missing. So, hopefully it's not the box filler, because... I mean, our past two cases, we have not gotten any. Um, I think that's four on six on this box. So I think that was the right box to pull back out, but I'm not sure just because I have a giant pile of recycling here. So yeah, hopefully it uh, corrects itself over the case and we don't have to worry about it. So uh, Milo for the Sharks. On the Young Guns. Because the fact that it was two cards is kind of weird when we got both the French and Makar for the abs on the canvas. When we got both the French and uh, the Dazzler's canvas pack. Because, like, I thought it could be the Dazzler's canvas pack, but we already hit, like, we've hit them in both. So it's not that. I think, was it Delandria first box or second? I don't remember. Mitchell for Chicago on the Young Guns. But, like, normally that's... I don't know. It's just weird. Hey, it's okay if stuff's a little bit weird. Sometimes it's spicier that way. Uh, McNiven on the red for the Habs. I'll sleeve that up. Those are two per case on average, so. And it's red on red. Always nice to get the team color. Yeah, definitely have had some weird boxes lately, so. Ottinger for the stars. Obviously, like, a massively produced product, you're going to have some stuff here and there, so. Uh, Hegel for Chicago on the portraits. Chicago's already got half a case. I'm kind of kidding when I say that, but they do have a lot of cards already, so. And next up, we got Prisky for the Panthers. 
Yeah, that's weird though. And it's like, it, when I open up the package, it's like, hey, it seems like there's not a, enough cards in there. And there wasn't. So. Uh, Burdine for the Jets. I think we got a Dazzler's Canvas coming up here. Canvas of Eichel for the Sabres and Dazzler's of Nelson for the Islanders. Laugh for the Rangers again. Like, technically, we got 24. Like, we got to hit a pack on average, but it's like one of those. Just, there was nothing in that one pack, and that's kind of weird. Lorentz for the Hurricanes. Kubelik decide to say slam. Uh, Miller for the Rangers. Nice one there. Like his game a lot. So. Yeah, so far. I mean, the laugh's nice. Young Guns have been, like, average. So it's been, like, I'd say average. It's been an average series, too. Uh, portraits of Anderson for the... Uh, Kings and French variation of Sorensen for the Sharks. Next up, uh, Kivlenix for Columbus on the Young Guns. Okay, uh, another Young Gun canvas coming up, or I guess it's our first Young Gun canvas technically. Oh, it's another program of excellence. We pulled this guy before. For Chicago, Mr. Taze, how's it going? Nice to see you again. Uh, that's spicy. Two per, uh, two per the master. And obviously just base on the rest. I won't forget the first case like of uh, 19, like our first ever break is 1920 series, uh, series two. And we got like, uh, how many, it's four times 12 is what, 48. I think we ended up with like 56 rookie portraits instead of like the typical 48 that you get. Brome for the Red Wings. It was wild. There are some packs with like, um, there are some packs that had three portraits in them it was just one of the most bizarre and cool things well for chicago bodan on the rookie materials again chicago just builds their own hobby box that pack had that box or that pack only had uh five base cards so it makes it to me feel like that one pack was missing like a jersey card but i don't know send for the devils on the opg Maybe we'll make up for it in, in the entire case. So it was from the middle row. Yossi for the Predators on the OPG. Just as a heads up, that OPG's got the tip, the like, I wouldn't say typical, but more common rough edge. So not that it's a major card, but it's just slightly not cut. Uh, Heart for the Flyers. Hopefully he bounces back. McNiven for the Habs. I swear we pulled him like we pulled his red. We pulled two of his base. Nice to get some different players in here. Come on. <laughs> Got a retro coming up of Larmy for the Penguins. Just a regular retro there. And. Uh, send for the Devils. Uh, we've said his name a lot. Last pack of the box. So, like, solid box. Uh, program of excellence. Nothing, like, super fancy. But just solid. Uh, Carlson for Chicago. 
Ugh. Pull a team viewer back up here. Yep. Yeah. Solid. On a scale of 1 to 10, the break so far has been about, like, 7. Uh, probably, probably, an, I'll give it a 7.5 right now. Because the laugh, the laugh program of excellence is a really cool card. So, and the taze as well. The taze is nice just because, like, you know that's a junior theme card, and what he did in the World Juniors was just crazy. Yeah, hopefully we get a box filler, because the past two full cases we've done, we have not hit a box filler. So, uh, that box is fine. This is 270, just in case I need to have it ready. There we go. Ooh, this is all stuck together. All right, do we have an extra card here maybe? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, we have seven, or eight, I guess. Uh, Di Pietro for the Canucks on the rookie portraits. Di Pietro for the Canucks on the rookie portraits. Uh, Kratzoff for the Rangers on the Marquee Rookie. We have some stuck together packs here. So this makes me think we're going to get something spicy at some point. Because stuck together packs can get pretty uh, wild. Ooh, we got a random here between Ottawa and Calgary. So, uh, Calgary was Danny and Ottawa was Robert. So at the end of the break, we'll random that one off. Um, and then two Karask Dazzlers for the Bruins. It's got a little bit of a softer bottom, but... If we do get a second one of that canvas, then uh, what we'll do is give both of you one of them, because a random is a 50-50 shot, so... That's just the fairest way to do it. And bases stuck together. Frank Coos for this abs. That means it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer break today because can't fly through the cards as quickly but it's okay we're here for a good time the Andrea for the stars uh de rosier for the florida panthers Whenever the base gets stuck together, it always like just takes my concentration away. So it's like really tough to focus on talking and like unsticking all the cards. McNiven for the Habs and a French variation of Rana for the Capitals. I don't know what it is, but it's just like my brain's like cannot compute. Uh, Lawrence for the Hurricanes. Base on the rest. Yeah. Uh, Anisma for the Senators. Base on the rest. Uh, Pogansky for the Blues on the Young Guns. Feels like we've hit lots of young guns in this box already. And a jersey card. Well, that's a solid one. Krebs for Vegas. Krebs for Vegas on the jersey card. How many young guns have we hit in this one? We've hit the three. I guess we've hit three, so it's about right. I mean, it is because it's half the box, so it should be three. Uh, McMichael for the Capitals on the OPG rookie. So we need a big young gun out of the second half here. Get a big young gun out of the second half of this box. That'd be nice. 
Uh, Ottinger for the stars on the portraits. You know, I'm not, don't ask for too much, but just, just a big young gun. Uh, Turkov for the Blue Jackets. That is, I mean, not one of them. Dumba for the Wild on the canvas. Ty Smith for the Devils. That's a like solid one, solid one. Not the like top tier one, but very good defenseman. So he'll take that. We got an exclusives coming up. Yep, UD exclusives of Svetch for the Hurricanes to 100. Nice little Svetch exclusives for the Hurricanes. We'll put that in the young gun pile. 12 of 100. I think it was yeah, it was 12. And you'll see on the blue award winners for the Predators. So definitely a quieter box here, but that can all change. All it takes is one card. Uh, Vedimo for the Habs on the uh, Young Guns. Geeky for the Hurricanes. We did hit the French, yeah, we did hit the French variation early on, right? It was, uh, yeah, Verana. So, and why these last three packs are the spiciest, like, have the potential to be the spiciest. McKinnon for the Avs on the portraits. I've noticed it's, like, the, like, third to last, second and third to last pack sometimes have the, like, biggest hits. Perron for the Blues. And Bowers for the abs on the rookie. Last pack of the box. So it's like a bit of a quieter box, but that's okay. They can't all be winners. Uh, Belzeal for the Habs on the retro. Quieter box, but... I mean, the Krebs rookie material is solid. Um, like, Ty Smith is nice and exclusives is nice. But, you know, it's just want a little bit spicier, you know? Want a bigger name young gun. We always want the big name young guns. And you look at our first break, we pulled two Schutzels and two Caps. That was nuts. Uh, that is this is box seven five eight just because we have weird boxes going on I'm just gonna make sure I get all of these on just in case just in case I need them so Harley for the stars on the rookie portraits. Reed Duke for Vegas. Kemper for the stars and Jack Hughes for the devils. Yeah, we need we need the big young guns here. Pull out the big guns. Ant whistle for Chicago. And Chicago is just cleaning up as they typically do, but Retro of Ant Whistle for you guessed it, Chicago. So 
we should have a clear cut, a box filler, and a French young gun left at the very least. Colazar for Vegas. Uh, program of excellences are done. Uh, technically should have three jersey cards left on average. Uh, probably one red rookie. True for the Sharks and French variation of Maroon for the Lightning. Just like on average. I think we got a, uh, whatchamacallit, Radish for the Rangers coming up. Yeah. Good sign for Ottawa. Uh, Riley for the senders on the canvas. There we go. Come on, get it open. Perfect. Legison again for the Oilers. Legison sometimes floats between Cap and uh, Stutzla, so. But in the first box, he was with neither. He was with Romanov. Got a clear cut coming? Ooh. Uh, well, it's a clear cut. Young Guns of Turkov for the Blue Jacket, so I didn't call a big name clear cut. And it's a little bit on the fuzzy side. It looks like it's a little bit off print. Um, also, the back side is like the side that needs to be on the front on those. But hey, it's a clear cut Young Gun, so. Unfortunately, it just doesn't go on the top because it's just, it doesn't really top any of those three cards and yeah. Ingram for the Predators. And like Turkoff liked him in junior, but like NHL wise, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Stranger things have happened. Marchment for the Panthers. Hopefully we get a good Young Guns, like hopefully we get a Young Guns exclusives and a good one at that in this. Uh, Tavares for the Leafs. Tavares for the Leafs. And, well, there he is, Kaprizov for the while. You got a little bit of fluff up in the top edge. There we go. Um, but outside of that looks decent. Corners are okay. Nice one there for the wild. There you go, Danny. Uh, Ranta, you can slide over. Honestly, we'll just put we'll just put him over here. I don't know why I slid uh Kivaranta over. He can just slide over though. He's in. We're gonna have to make space there, anyways. Next up. We've got a street close of Vasilevsky for the Lightning. Tampa Bay. Hidden on a base variation. Not the one that you're hoping for. You're hoping for the day with the Cubs, but. Uh, Marchment, no, Marchment is this guy. That's Marchment. Uh, the bald person, well, receding hairline is Darren Radish. Uh, yeah, Kaprizov is, like, he's sometimes with Marchman. Uh, Legison and Marchman are two good tells. Legison's normally, like, the one I tell for the, uh, bigger ones. Laugh Blue for the Rangers, so that's our third Laugh OPG rookie. Along with the Program of Excellence, so we're definitely having a fun time here. It's funny over here, lots of laughs. Uh, Broberg for the Oilers. Sorry, I had to get my uh, break dad joke in. Makar for the Avs on the OPG award winners. Well, I mean, halfway through, solid, solid break. Nothing like. I mean, I guess the laugh program of excellence is pretty spicy. Pavelski for the stars on the canvas. 
Hey, Old Guns is a sick set. If, like, honestly, they were to take, like, uh, retired players and stuff like that, they've done it in the past. Ottinger for the Stars on the Marquee Rookie. Um, they've done it in the past, so. Uh, but, like, do that and, like, update players who never got a Young Gun. I think that'd be a pretty cool little set. Call it Old Guns, call it whatever. Reduke for Vegas. That'd be a cool little set, though. You know, you think Pacioretty, Tana, I mean, Ryan Graves are already three players that you can name off the top of your head that don't have young guns. Braden Burke for the, uh, er, sorry, for the Arizona Coyotes. And last pack, we have the French. I don't think we hit the French variation. Uh, Nizov for the Sharks, did we? Now I can't remember. Uh, we did. It was Maroon. All right. Yeah, Caleb Jones. Caleb Jones didn't get one? I thought he did. Robbie Shrimp. I mean... Robbie Shrimp, Jason Krogh. Um, God, there's a bunch of good ones. But, like, they did actually do Gretzky in 0405. They did retired like legend young guns they had like a regular and then like a shorter print one i got a couple gretzkys they were all dinged up because i got them like off of marketplace and the person didn't really keep them in the best of shape but it was in a giant lot of cards so i had to sort through it and figure them all like get all the good stuff kind of so they're so cool like i like them it's just I don't really want to move them because they're ding corners. This is a 491. I don't know where they're hiding in here, but they're hiding somewhere. Uh, I don't think Alex Burroughs does. Yeah, like you could easily have like a fun set. And that's what like some people were speculating about for this year too. Uh, Delandrea for the stars. So as much as like some people kind of like scoffed at the idea of extended or a series through an update set. That's why having a set like that is really helpful because you can just squeeze in an extra 24, 25 young guns a year. Kratz off for the Rangers again. Rangers have got a lot of just like nickel and dime cards for lack of a better phrase. I think we got a, no, probably regular canvas maybe. No, it's a young gun. Uh, Mantha for the Red Wings and Joseph Vol for the Leafs. I know Kessler had one. Um, there's some other major ones. Frank Hoos for the Avs. Yeah, I like. I I'm excited for extended just based off the fact that you get more traded players, stuff like that. Uh, Joseph for the Penguins and like upper decks known for having good easter eggs and products so i feel like that's a product where you could put in a ton of spicy easter eggs and honestly update sets are fairly underrated um you look at chronicles from panini and it's just a fabulous fabulous set well there's our first checklist uh so stutzel and cousins so that'll get randomed off if we don't pull a second one between ottawa and buffalo uh gabriel and i want to say robert yeah so if we do pull a second one uh, that will, like, you'll both get one if you pull a French variation or exclusives or high gloss or whatever parallel you can dream up. Um, the winner will get that. The loser will get the regular one type of thing. So, uh, Zagadulin for the Flames and French variation of Lucic for the fr Flames. So, but yeah, I'm excited for extend just based off the fact that, like, long term, it's a set that makes a lot of sense. And honestly, if they put it into more like an update type set, I think it'd be really cool. Uh, Nijov for the Sharks on the Young Guns. Because, like, especially this year, you know, you can fit, for example, I don't think Kali have had much in black. Uh, I don't think he had a ton in black diamond. I could be mistaken. But, you know, you put him in uh, Kalorn for the Lightning. You put him in, like, all of his update stuff and that. Like, all the early year stuff. 
you put that in that, you add like some cool unique sets like they have, and it becomes like just a fun product, value product to open up. So, I, don't, I love it. I love the concept of it. Sharing Govich for the devils. And so it's like, just comes down to the execution. And again, anything that follows kind of like the whole Panini Chronicles type stuff, like if you can follow that type, which it looks like it probably will, I think it'll be a good set. So Carlson for Chicago on the jerseys, by the way, jersey cards are known for having the bad corners and edges. So um, if I don't always shout them out, it's just because they're very prevalent and I sometimes forget about that. But this year with just the, um, like the black line at the bottom, it the corners show up a lot more. McMichael for the Capitals. Man, I'm excited for extended. I mean, I'm excited for Allure this year. Um, Alexia for the Capitals. I think Allure will be, Allure will be better. Uh, Malay for the Capitals. Platinum, SP Authentic, your usuals. Uh, Skybox, Metal Universe is what I'm really, really, really excited for. Because that one's got the potential for some crossover. I have Fallow for the Kings. There's a Kings card. Um, yeah, yeah, the base and the canvas, for that matter. Like, it, um, some of the canvases and stuff like i thought they probably could have snuck them in later but uh romanov on the young guns for the habs so second romanov if you're gonna double up on one that's not a bad one but again i think that's probably a bit of a time restriction thing um they're probably like had them in placeholder spots and for their new teams and they just didn't couldn't get them in time Ooh, we got a blue portraits coming up Who's it going to be? Uh, Jonas Johansson for the Sabres to 25. So we've pulled uh, three of the blue rookie portraits, or four now, I think. We've pulled Burdeen, Harkins, Johansson, and now, uh, or Johansson now, and we pulled DiPietro before. Unfortunately, probably one of the worst ones to get, but hey, he's a goalie with the avalanche. If something happens and he goes insanely hot in the playoffs, you can hope. Makar for the Avalanche. But yeah. Johansson on the blue rookie portraits to 25 for the Sabres. We pulled more blues than yellows, which is the really weird one. McKinnon for the Avs. Because, like, the blues are way rarer. Supposed to be way rarer than the yellows. But just luck has it, we were finding the blues instead of the yellows. Fox for the Rangers on the canvas. Uh, Bowers for the Avalanche. So lots of Av stuff there, and just in the OPG slot. Uh, Krebs on the retro. I the blank back. Uh, I own one of them now, which is really exciting. I love blank back OPG cards. That's just a regular, but I love the blank backs. Uh, Leonard for the Sharks. And the last one here. Uh, Soderstrom for the Yotes. I think we got the French variation in there as well. Yeah, just making sure. Short-term memory and all. All right, so it's been about, I'd say an average break so far. Um, you know, we've had some cool stuff. We've had some uh, weird stuff and let's get some more weird and cool stuff. So probably seven out of 10 at this point. Like our clear cut young gun wasn't a good name. The blue rookie portraits, not a great name. Our French young gun, not a great name. So a little bit unlucky there, but we hit the best young program of excellence that you could hit with laugh. Um, 
I mean, Kiviranta isn't the best OPG top prospects to hit, but he's not the worst, so. And this is 248. Yeah, I hope Extended gets more of the like updated player shots in there. And it's just gonna be exciting. It'll be a good like stopgap product this year too. So, uh, Joseph for the Penguins, because it's definitely like it's gonna be tough to get on card autos. So, and Upper Deck really wants them and like is great from a collecting standpoint. Oh, we got a Sorokin. Young Gun Cam is coming up. Jones for the Blue Jackets and Sorokin for the Islanders. You know it's Sorokin because you can. His pose is very similar to the. Uh, to his Young Gun, but it's a nice one. Like, good Young Gun Canvas. So. Good done solid there. It'd be nice to get a Stutzla. You need a Stutzla. Larmy for the Penguins. Braden Burke for the Yotes. Something I'm noticing less of too is the uh, the retro blacks to 100 in OPG. Uh, those are not falling like the one per case that they did last year. Mikolo, Mikola for the Blues on the Young Guns. They're close to, but not quite, I would say. And exclusive seems to be falling a little bit rarer too. Uh, McLeod for the Oilers on the Rookie Portraits. Angelo for the Penguins and Corrali for the Bruins on the French variation. So they pulled the French in this box. Mental note to me. Chatfield for the Canucks. Honestly, I don't mind his game. I think he's, between like him and Brisebois, I think he's the better potential NHLer. But we'll see. Doggy for the Hurricanes on the canvas. And the next young gun coming up is... Kasha for the Flyers. I think that's a good sign. I feel like that's a good sign. Rookie materials coming up, and it is Latuna for the Sharks. Lawrence for the Hurricanes on the OPG rookie. You'll have you for the Canucks on the rookie portraits. Hack and pop for the Ducks. He's looking decent in Carolina. Paul Mary for the Devils. Well, there's your Sorokin regular too for the Islanders. So, got his canvas and the uh, base in the same box. There you go, Michael. Nice little box for the Islanders here. Every box is a good box for Chicago. Well, pretty much every box. Uh, oh, another exclusives. That kind of snuck up on me. Uh, Halak for the Bruins to 100. 33 of 100. Well, there you go, Bruins. Bruins, one of the weaker teams. So it's nice to see them getting a card like that. Delandrea for the Stars.
Uh, Stuart Skinner for the Oilers on the rookie portraits. Uh, Bobby Ryan for the Senators. It's funny, like, how consistent the base normally falls in the pack because there's sometimes where, like, I really don't see a player because they're kind of in, like, the middle of a, like, base crop, so I don't see their photo a ton. So, like, that one was Edler, for example. Shea Theodore for Vegas on the uh, canvas. And it's, like, even Barbershop. just like, huh, I didn't realize they're in this. You don't really pay too much attention to the base. But Krebs for Vegas. Just mainly looking to see if the uh, French variation is written anywhere. Retro coming up. Uh, Prisky for the Panthers. Just a regular retro. And a Baraban off for the Leafs on the Young Guns. So, another box down. It's box seven. Now we'll go back through the base of that one, uh, the weird box. It's in the middle row. Gotta remember that. It's in the middle row. Alright, here we go. I just remembered my cat doesn't have her dinner out and available for her. So, Ooh, we got a double sticker box here. Uh, this box is 92 and it wanted to be uh, 432, but it's actually 92. Same thing on this side, you got the stickers overlapping. So, maybe we'll have something fancy in here. Yeah. Hopefully we get the box filler still. That's the one card that I'm worried that we didn't hit in that. Um, in the box that was missing a pack. Or the pack that was missing the two cards. Hopefully we get the box filler still. Because we haven't pulled one in a long time. Yellison for the Flames. On the Young Guns. But we've hit two exclusives. So if we get back to like two exclusives and the Young Gun exclusive per case... I'd be happy. Reinhardt for the Sabres. I'm still standing by my calls. We'll see if they're correct or not, but Skinner for the Oilers on the Young Guns. I think that's our second Skinner. No Stutzla yet. Um, no Cousins. No oh, there's a Fluorescent. Who is it going to be? Uh, well, Romanov for the Habs. Uh, good one to get. So we doubled up on Romanov and pulled his fluorescent. So a good little break for the Habs here. Uh, honestly, one of the better condition fluorescences. Uh, not quite stand worthy, though. Not quite. Normally I'd put it on the stand, but eh. I don't think it's quite there yet. Or anymore. Uh, March Pimp for the Panthers. Oh, uh, yeah, no Lankinens. That's the other one. Uh, Robertson for the Leafs on the Portraits, and Kako for the Rangers on the French. Yeah, please suit it. I think, yeah, he's in, is it, yeah, he's in this and then Kurashev's in Series 1, if I remember. I think at least Doughty for the Kings, Weber for the Habs, Canvas and Dazzlers respectively. Kurashev for Chicago on the rookie portraits. So it's Cousins and that pack really just didn't want to open. It's Cousins and Stutzler are the two big young guns we haven't hit yet. 
Uh, Vanishek for the Capitals on the retro. Uh, Pino for the Capitals. Those are those are the two big ones, right? And Lankinen's kind of like in there, but he's normally with he's normally with Stutzla, so uh, Larmy for the Penguins. So let's see let's see a Stutzla then. Uh, Coughlin for Vegas. Definitely need the Cousins. Uh, definitely need the Stutzla. Bowers for the Abs. I guess Newhook might be another player. I think Jake Sanderson signed as well in Ottawa for next year. So, uh, Pope Gansky for the Blues again. Starting to double up on more and more. I mean, that's kind of common. You normally get one and a half young gun per case. So... Just odds wise. Next pack. Well, there he is. Stutzla for the Senators. Yeah, Holloway with the Oilers. Hopefully his wrist injury isn't too bad. So There we go. There's the Stutzla. So that should mean we get Lankin in this box. We'll put them on this side. Normally it means we get Lankanen, but who knows? We got a pink Dazzlers coming up. And it is Tavares for the Leafs. McLeod for the Oilers on the blue. Uh, Shellman for the Sharks on the Young Guns. There we go. I think we're at about a, a slightly above average. Uh, I'd say average case. Uh, Hack and Paw for the Ducks on the Rookie Portraits. Just because our like our base fluorescent so far is okay. Our Young Gun canvases have been fine. Uh, our program of excell excellences are great. Uh, young Guns wise, fine. Headman for the Lightning on the award winners. Uh, clear cut Young Gun was kind of mad. The blue portraits was meh. So, be nice to get like one special one. Again, still sticking to my predictions, but. Brett Hall on the retired uh, canvas for the Stars. So, we've hit. We've honestly like beat the odds on the uh, retired Stars and. Uh, program of excellence because they're one in 196 each of them they're one in 192 so you normally get again one and a half per uh per case this time we got a little bit more than that soderstrom for the yokes got two of each so beat the odds there and last one here we have harley for the stars on the retro so not bad not a bad box actually that was the Romanoff fluorescence was in that box with the Stutzla so that's a good box alright alright box number 9 yeah cause it's 10, 11, and 12 Gotta do math. Sometimes math is hard after your nine boxes into a 12 box case. <laughs> uh, box 23, I think this one got the double sticker treatment as well. Yep, it got the double sticker treatment as well. So it's either gonna be lucky or not lucky. We'll find out. Let's see. What was the underlying number? 
Oh, it ripped off. Uh, it was, I think, 217 was the underlying number, so. Here we go. But 223 is the actual box number. Pack one. Let's see something spicy quickly. Pratt soft for the Rangers on the portraits. And I'm still sticking to like the Hoaglander Cousins type of uh, French Young Guns. Ooh, I think we got a checklist coming up here though. Well, that's the second checklist. So both people get one right now. Uh, on Stutzel and Cousins. So at the very least, Buffalo, you got half of a Cousins Young Gun. If we do hit a... Uh, an exclusives or something like that. Again, it'll, we'll just random that one off. And then we'll split those evenly. Uh, Ovechkin for the Capitals on the canvas. Since, I mean, if you're going to get a canvas, Ovechkin's one of the better ones to get. So, yeah. Hopefully we get the actual cousins in this uh, this box. Brome for the Red Wings. Still missing Lankinen, still missing cousins. Uh, I think Priest Suitors, well, another Pink Dazzlers. Uh, Olofsson for the Sabres. Verdine for the Jets. Delandrea for the Stars. We got a young gun canvas coming up here. Besser for the Canucks and Braden Burke for the Yotes on the young gun canvas. It's a double Dazzlers box. We've got lots of Dazzlers this break, but. Next up is McLeod for the Oilers. And Ottinger for the Stars on the Retro. Next Young Gun coming up, and it is Kivlinix for the Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets have done, I mean, quantity-wise, decent. You got the clear cut. You got a couple Kivlinix. You got a regular Turkoff. So you got stuff. Uh, Johansson for the Sabres on the rookie portraits. Angelo for the Penguins. I, have we hit him yet? I honestly can't remember. Canvas coming up here of Anders Lee for the Islanders. Lee for the Islanders. Right, so no Angelo yet. So that's a, I mean, it's a good sign that we hit a new new name. Uh, Milos for the Sharks. I feel like we haven't hit him yet, but I could be wrong. Because the Sharks have five young guns, so it's easy to get them confused. Ooh, another fluorescence popping up. Who's it gonna be? It is Peyton Krebs for the Vegas Golden Knights. So nice one there. Our fluorescences were good. In decent shape as well. Minimal chipping, there's a little bit, but like considering what some of those can have, it's in decent shape. Yeah, we hit good fluorescences. That's that's always good. Wool for the Leafs. But it'd be nice to hit a big parallel. Like big parallel young gun. That's kind of our hope for the last bit. And to get the box filler, because we on it like we haven't opened up a box filler in a long time. So there's a laugh portraits for the Rangers. And French variation of Kyle Connor for the Jets. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, award winners of the Tampa Bay Lightning for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Great. I feel like that's the first time we've pulled that card. Uh, Malcolm for the Penguins on the canvas. I'm just going to go crack a window after this break because it is getting a little bit um, on the hotter side in here. Uh, Belzeal for the Habs. Uh, Jax, I, that is currently the plan. Um, plans can change, but currently the plan is to have another full case for next week. So, Makar for the Avs. It's You're going to see probably a few, like, a case every like two out every three weeks for the next little bit. I'll make sure we have some saved for, uh, oh, there's a good young gun. Another Stutzlaw for the Senators. Took a while to get one. This time you get your second one, but yeah, you're gonna see a decent amount of series two just cause it's a really good value product to open up. Uh, it's really reliable and you know, yeah, it's fun, so. And last pack of the box. Regula for the Chicago Blackhawks, and that is it. So I'm just gonna go. Um, normally on Mondays, uh, the I'd say the best way is to join the email list. But like, people are checking the site quite regularly. But normally, like Mondays after news is typically when we post breaks. So. Um, but yeah, check your emails around then. That's probably like your best time or even just check the site directly. Um, but generally, once the email goes live, the spots get sold really quickly. So, and even like kind of before then. Um, I'm just gonna open up a window quickly just to get some fresh air in here because it is a little bit on the toasty side. So one second. Uh, let me open up. What one do I want to open up? Let's go with this one. Probably get a bit better of a breeze. There we go. Actually, why don't I open up both and get a cross breeze in? Okay, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, they they crash like they fill really quickly. Crash isn't the right word, but you know what I mean. They just go from full to empty in like three seconds. <laughs> it's nuts. Again, thank you all for your support on the breaks. It's definitely a lot of fun. Um, we are looking into a couple things. Uh, one thing that I did want to ask is how how people feel like just about the whole pick your spot. Like if like, do you like the fact that you can pick your spot number? Would you rather have it just like more centralized? Um, like for example, it's just like a direct quantity. And so that way you just like, there's 30 say for hockey, it'd be, you know, 31, you get a random spot. And then for random, the random list, it'd be uh, the order that people essentially buy the spots in rather than like the number that you choose, but just let me know. I know some people are superstitious. I am myself, so 440 on the box. All right, here we go. Ah. And sorry about that little bit of a pause. It is just starting to crank up heat wise in here. Especially with the lights going as well, it just adds more and more heat into the room. So um, just want to try and make think, make sure everything's kind of cool. Uh, Ustamenko for the Flyers on the portraits. Uh, Vincent's not a silly question. Uh, looking into it, so. Uh, why not YouTube for breaks? Uh, Zamula for the flyers on it uh i like the dynamic of streaming on twitch like i feel like twitch has the better chat platform between the two 
Like, honestly, that's the biggest part of it. Um, I like the integrations that exist for Twitch a little bit better. Athens to you for the Oilers and Lil Jagrin for the Leafs on the Dazzlers. YouTube as a videos platform I like better too, so that's why I like we upload after. But um, I do think there are reasons to switch over to YouTube. And like there are definite pros and cons to both. So uh, Skinner for the Oilers. But it's also kind of gives a little bit more reach for the breaks too. Yeah, we don't really care about um, like the affiliate status on the channel and stuff like that. Because um, it's just, you know, we're a store. Uh, Ustamenko for the Flyers. Uh, so it's all about just, you know, um, making sure people have a place to view it. And so that's kind of behind it. Well, there's our Lanikin, or Lankinen for Chicago on the Young Guns. It's been a while since we pulled him, so. Yeah, both are, both are good platforms. Uh, like, nothing wrong with either one of them. I see the pros and cons to both. Obviously, YouTube does a better job with VODs because they just instantly exist there. Um, but, yeah. So, kind of like, both have pros and cons. I just, Twitch I generally prefer a little bit. Uh, course call for the Leafs on the Rookie Portraits. Uh, for its overall interface and stuff but youtube's catching up there uh I've, like it has gotten better i actually have started watching a little bit more on youtube and just trying to get used to it so dry settle for the oilers um there's stuff about twitch that not the biggest fan of um for example the the i guess people are calling it the purple screen of death where if you're embedded or whatnot um you can't always see it uh heading for the lightning on the canvas It'll pop up with like the annoying pop up and ad, which I don't like. Um, random ads, I don't like, and that's honestly a bigger reason behind not going behind us uh, not ever going to affiliate on Twitch is because that way I don't think you get the random mid rolls. Broberg for the Oilers. If at any point we do start, like if at any point anyone starts getting random mid rolls, mid roll advertisements. Um, let me know because that is literally one of the biggest game breaking experiences for a break and i do not want that happening so dry settle for the oilers um and then that will be probably when we switch to youtube so but yeah it's just something that i've kept an eye on over the last uh few weeks so ant whistle for chicago well a few months and stuff like that so yeah pros and cons Yeah, I mean, like, we try to be fair with our pricing, right? So, uh, Prisky for the Panthers. Like, that that's the biggest thing, you know? Um, try to be as fair as we can. So, Weber for the Habs. You know, it's, it's nice to, it's nice to hear that. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's nice to see people get into the hobby, so... Ty Smith for the Devils. Second Ty Smith. Not a bad one to double up on. Oh, but the room temperature in here, by the way, just from, like, opening up those windows has dropped, like, probably four or five degrees. It gets toasty. Uh, Gaudreau. Street image variation for the Flames. Street clothes looking pretty dapper in his suit. But yeah. Uh... Baseball is something that we're looking at. Honestly, I'd like to get like soccer in for breaks as well. It's just really tough to get. Same I know another like frequently asked question is like hobby boxes for football and basketball and even I mean to that extent even baseball. Uh Belzeal for the Habs. So definitely would like to uh expand out. Nice! Romanov solid. I like he's a He's a very entertaining player to watch. He is a, a new-aged, old-school defenseman. That's kind of an oxymoron, but you know what I mean. Lorenz for the Hurricanes on the portraits. Like, he hits hard. Um, he moves the puck well. He skates well. So, I like him. Uh, Kurashev for Chicago. 
on the rookie portraits, and Kuznetsov for the Capitals on the French variation. <laughs> nice, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess technically local. It's a, I mean, you can't drive here now, but uh, restriction wise, Cal Foot for the Lightning. We haven't hit him yet, but technically local. It's within the, uh, you could drive the, here and back in a day if you were, you know, allowed to. Ehlers for the Jets. But, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that things are the way they are in BC, at least right now. So, um, yeah. Ian Mitchell for Chicago. Chicago's getting half of this box, to tell you that. I mean, we know how much Chicago hits. I've already driven this point home numerous breaks. But Chicago just hits so consistently. It's just crazy. They're probably going to get... No. Nope. Uh, Alexia for the Capitals. I was expecting another Chicago jersey there, to be honest. Still need a suitor? All right. We haven't hit Cousins yet. We haven't hit Suter. Uh, Kivaranta for the Stars. Who else haven't we hit yet? Let's see. Let's throw the team viewer back up here. Who else haven't we hit yet? Um, history. Who else haven't we hit? Off the top of my head. Uh, Oh man, that's nuts. Yeah, I've uh, I've seen some really crazy cases. We pulled a laugh, or not a laugh, sorry, uh, Kaprizov exclusives. I wanna say like three weeks ago, something like that. But it was like literally the worst box of series two we had ever opened up, like, and then the last pack had that, so. Oh, uh, Ingram. Ingram's actually like, honestly, really good um he has had really good stats at every level he's played at so uh, yeah we haven't had him yet uh i just the checklist just loaded up i should know he's better off the top of my head but um let's see we pulled chatfield uh we pulled i think we pulled everyone on that side yeah we pulled everyone on that side Honestly, like, it's looking like we just haven't pulled... Oh, Cole Smith, we haven't. So... Oh, yeah, Ingram Series... Is Ingram Series... Oh, yeah, he is Series 1. Uh, it's... It's, uh... Whatchamacallit? Uh, the other Nashville, Cole Smith. Cole Smith, 398 on the box number. All right. I'm just used to seeing him so much in this set of... With his young gun. Uh, it's Cole Smith that we haven't pulled yet. Uh, we've pulled Yellison, I think, I think it's just Cole Smith and Suter that we haven't pulled yet. And Cousins, so it's the three of them. And they're probably all together. Uh, yes, we've pulled a Quinny. Byram for the apps? First Byram card we've hit, I think. We've definitely pulled a Quinny. I think it's literally Smith, Suter, and, uh, and Cousins is the only three we haven't hit yet. I think, I think, I think. Send for the Devils. We've definitely hit him. But yeah, like our, our first case we were missing two. So, but we doubled up on... Well, okay. We may not have pulled the regular Cousins, but we've uh, pulled the Young Guns. Uh... RBC, unfortunately, the Bruins don't have a young gun, so uh, zero is the answer on that one. <laughs> I wish, like, if we pulled one, that'd be sick, because it'd be, like, some sort of really weird parallel, like a retro flashback acetate, which would be nuts. But uh, Miller for the Rangers. That's the second Miller that we've got, so. But yeah, like, hey, we hit... We hit a, uh, we hit a Cousins now, technically, so that's actually what happened in the first case that we ever opened up of this. We hit, we didn't hit two of the Young Guns, but one of them was, uh, we hit their Canvas, so. I think this is a, ooh, ooh, this is, oh, 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 that's, uh, 
that's okay. Uh, fluorescence blue to 50 of Kaprizov. And this one has a more typical wear and tear. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that goes for the spiciness. Okay, I will take that. I will take that. I'll take a cap to 50. Again, not as good as the Young Gun exclusives, uh, but we'll take the cap to 50. The blue with the green though, like it's got a blue green tint to it. It looks really nice. <laughs> I mean, Robert, you technically got a, uh, you got a exclusives, so. And they're tougher to hit this year. At least series two wise. Wool on the blue for the Leafs. Yeah, the, uh, the exclusives, there's some that went for like 2K before, but that was way too low. Like, I'm sorry, that, that was just too low. So I'm glad they popped back up. Oh, here's our second French variation. McMichael for the Capitals. And, well, I mean, we hit the clear cut, so you might as well hit the French variation to Turkoff. So, yeah. I mean, like, again, I wish, again, every single break, I wish that we could hit a Kaprizov to 50 or a card of equivalent value for everyone. Like, really do wish that. And, you know, unless you have Columbus, I wish our French, you know, young guns were a little bit better. But, hey, Crawley for the Rangers on the young guns. So, our French young guns were not good this case. But, hey, that happens. Them's the breaks. Technically, we could still get one more, but I don't think, like, again, having the Kaprizov out of 50, I think, is better than two average French young guns. So, we live for the Jets on the canvas. Yeah. I mean, like, that's solid. So, again, the edges are rough on it, but they, like, every fluorescence card has the same thing. Of a demo for the Habs, so we pulled his, uh... French young gun. That was the other French young gun that we hit. Technically, we could still get one more. Technically, we haven't pulled a box filler yet, but who knows? Uh, Byron for the Habs on the clear cut. Yeah. The the edges on them will always bring it down, but like again, your expectations with fluorescences, like if you were to get that card graded, is like a seven. Uh, Alexia for the Capitals on the thing just because like it's going to be rough it's a foiled it's a thin stock foiled card that is colored on the edges like no matter how well you do those unless the um unless they kind of uh whatchamacallit um like unless they put it directly from print and even then it might not do the trick if they put them directly from print into a top loader like you're going to get some chipping on cards like that van check for the capitals and the portraits but like, it'll still sell well just like make sure you're clear with it that it's got some rough edges but it went straight into the sleeve and top loader it was from the pack like that um it's just how those cards are unfortunately hellebuck for the jets like you wish they could be perfect and pristine but it's just you know it's just when stuff is in packs in a box that moves around and yeah Terry for the flyers it's unfortunate but say la vie all right so this uh this break went from kind of like a uh weird one to or like kind of met to pretty solid byron for the abs there we go another byron uh we're still missing we need the priest suitor and cole smith and obviously a base cousins would be nice here as well just to make sure we hit one of every young gun but at least we hit the canvas of Cousins, so regular love for Chicago. And again, if there is ever a team to be missing out on a young gun, uh, Chicago is at least one of the best ones for it because they have six. So odds are you probably have enough young guns elsewhere. So again, regular love for Chicago. Speaking of Chicago young guns. But again, the hope is, is that we pull everyone, so... I will say they did a really good job of hiding the Kaprizov, like the fact he has no jersey numbers. You can't really notice it too much on the card. So, uh, Joseph for the Penguins. Yeah, heck of a box here. Spicy.
We like spicy. Nicolo for the blues. So. Again, our young gun canvases have been like solid. Um, yeah, it's just been, it's been solid overall. McDavid for the Oilers on the canvas, Burns for the Sharks on the Dazzlers. So, uh, getting a Caprizov out of 50 is super nice. Yule Levy for the Canucks. I think we're technically missing a jersey card still. So that would be my guess on what the missing pack was. Uh, Bobby Ryan for the centers. I'll, so the reason why they got an exemption for lack, or for laugh, not lack, sorry. Uh, they got an exemption for him through the NHLPA and NHL just because given the status of laugh in the world and the hockey market, well, there's the suitor for Chicago. So, hey, he showed up. I think Chicago had like four young guns that box. Jeez. Uh, that was why they had it for laugh. Um, they got the exempt exemption for him. And there were also actually like a bunch of players that did get exemptions. Um, one second. Let me just put these down. Like... Byram was an exemption. Um, who else? There's a, there's a bunch of them, but like a bunch of the rookies were actually exemptions because they haven't actually like they didn't actually play an NHL game yet. And with Upper Deck needing to print cards, like there's a giant list. So, uh, Mark, it's gonna have same football and basketball breaks as this week. Um, the uh, it's gonna have uh, so it's gonna have that, and then hockey. It's gonna be another series two case, and then a bit of a spicier, a little bit of a higher price break um, with some hobby. It's gonna be a nice little hobby mixer. I think some uh, series ones from a couple of different years here, and uh, seven fifty seven on the box number. Series one from a couple different years, some black diamond maybe. So it's gonna be a spicier break though. So, uh, honestly, the NHLPA, like, from their standpoint, I get it because if you, the problem with that is that you then have to compensate the players if you use them right when they're drafted type of thing. Um, the NHLPA is different from the other leagues where, you know, typically it takes a longer amount of time to get to the NHL. So because of that, uh, it's, they're not part of the PA Ingram for the Predators on the rookie portraits. Um, they're, they have to make sure. And it's also, it's not just the PA, it's also the NHL um, as a whole. Uh, they need to make sure, well, there's a Cousins young gun as I'm trying to get a point across here. Uh, but it's different from sport to sport. Like basketball and football, the minute that they are drafted, the team like they can be used and stuff just based off how the licensing agreements work there and that's all it comes down to and the big reason behind it is the draft age um because uh you can draft an ncaa player and they can go back and play in the ncaa in hockey and because they can't get compensated uh that is the biggest driver behind why you don't see it bowers for the avalanche on the young guns canvas so that is the biggest driver behind it is that, um, you know, your NCAA athletes, they can't get paid for it. So that is uh, the big, ooh, this is uh, an upside down backwards young gun of Nigel for the Sharks. Like literally nothing special. It's just upside down and backwards. Um, yeah, I mean, again, it's one of those like tough ones. Um, I, I wish they could do it more upon draft. It'd be exciting. You'll see on the red for the Predators. I think it'd be a little bit more exciting because you immediately get the draft type in there. Like, for example, when Yul Levy was drafted, people would be stoked. But at the same time, those players may never play another game of hockey. Like, they may never reach the NHL. So, uh, Tampa Bay on the blue. So, um... 
is one of those just like, I get both sides of it. Uh, it's frustrating even working in like the video game side of the hockey industry because you have to like, you can't technically put the players in the game until you have until they play an NHL game, and so it was always frustrating. Uh, Belzeal for the Habs and French variation of Reeves. We've got a ding corner on this one, by the way, like decently ding for the Golden Knights. You couldn't put them in the game until they played in the NHL, and if they're playing in the AHL, for example, they actually have to sign a different uh, contract to use their licensing, and so. Sometimes what would happen is that there's a CHL player that once they leave the CHL but move to the AHL, Lawrence for the Hurricanes on the Young Guns, they would um, they wouldn't have that sign. So then you have to take them out of the game because you technically couldn't have them in because they weren't under a contract. And then you put them back in later. Uh, hints for the stars. So it's very, it's all very confusing. But it just comes down to the fact that like. The NHL draft age is 18, and because players can go back to the NCAA, um, they're kind of limited by that. Uh, De Rosier for the Panthers, and honestly, the biggest thing there is that the NCAA doesn't allow athletes to get paid. It'd be, it'd be a, I think you'd see a bit of a different story if athletes could get paid. Uh, next up, Armia for the Habs on the clear cut. Uh, BGB, that one is, like, are you talking about, like, thrashers and stuff like that? Uh, some of that comes down to licensing, and some of that just comes down to not having the templates or the rights. But, yeah, some of it can come down to licensing. So, uh, Regula for Chicago. So, that is partially why. And another of it is just, like... I don't know. For the most part, it has most of the old jerseys. So, try settle for the Oilers. But yeah, a lot of it just comes down to licensing and rights, and it's it's a frustrating thing because like it's one of those things you'd love to have everything in there up to date, one hundred percent, and like all the old jerseys, all the old logos. But copyright is a thing. So, hurdle for the Sharks. And yeah. Yeah, the Sabres black and white and red. I honestly, I don't know why that one's not in there. Um, it could be an ownership thing where they request it not to. Ustamenko for the Flyers, but I don't get that. Um, it's just one of those things where there's like certain things that the teams are just like, yeah, we want those jerseys or no, we don't. Um, so it really just depends. It's a case by case basis. Robertson on the retro for the Leafs. But yeah, that's one that I've always wanted in game. So uh, I love that jersey. I wish Buffalo would go back to it because I think it's a lot cooler. But uh, well, another Turkoff. Hopefully, whoever had Columbus, hopefully you like your Turkoffs. But no Cole Smiths yet. So that's the one young gun we haven't hit. Uh, we've doubled up on Suzuki. We've got a single Caprice off. Doubled up on Miller's uh, Romanovs. So. Uh, Kivlenix for the Blue Jackets. So, some of it comes down to brand identity too. That one is a long, long discussion point. So, <laughs> there, there's some weird stuff with brand identity. Harley for the Stars. But like the fact that Sabres used it last year should point to the fact that they're willing to at least use it. I hope. Uh, Keller for the Yotes and Connecting for the Flyers. But yeah, I don't know. It's strange. The world can be a little bit strange at times with stuff like that. And again, but back to the players, like, as much as it'd be nice for Upper Deck to be able to produce the cards right away once they're drafted, Vanacek for the Capitals, by the way, on the rookie. Um, as much as it'd be nice for that, unfortunately, uh, just it's just like a limitations thing based off of agreement. So that's why I'm glad they have CHL stuff. Uh, just because you do get the first look at cards that way. Zagadulin for the Flames on the retro. Before I forget, we do have the one random still. So. But yeah. And like from Upper Deck standpoint, you probably would like to have cards as soon as, you know, players are drafted to go in there. Oh, there's Cole Smith. Okay, we hit everyone. Second to last pack, but he came through. In the clutch, Mr. Cole Smith. 
for the Nashville Predators. All right, last pack. I think just portraits, nothing fancy. Wolf for the Leafs. That is the break. So overall, I mean, okay, not too shabby. Um, yeah, we had that one weird, weird pack. No box filler again, actually. That is uh, that is weird. So we'll do uh, what years do I have? Let's do a random. We'll do a random overtime pack as well between all the teams because no box filler again. And that's like. That's our third straight case, honestly, with no box filler, which is really strange because that is the uh, marketed one per, well, not one per, but like on average one per case and, you know, not getting one in, uh, not getting one in three, three straight cases is pretty, pretty weird. But uh, did we get all the jersey cards? Yeah, we got six. So the missing card, honestly, was probably a box filler, uh, like. That would make the most sense. Okay, we got the random for the Flames and the Senators. So um, I will get that set up here. So I will uh, see what we can do about that. So I haven't heard back on other stuff yet. So uh, we'll just do teams. Oh, wait, this is... Uh, this is for overtime pack. We'll do that for, or we'll do that second, and then we'll do the uh, Calgary Ottawa on the random for that. Uh, Calgary, Calgary, Ottawa. Ooh, I missed a T. Ottawa. All right. <laughs> There we go. All right, here we go. So three times on the oops, wrong page there. Uh, three times on for the young gun, or for the canvas checklist between Calgary and Ottawa. Whoever's on top gets it once, twice, and thrice. So Calgary, uh, Calgary Flames. There we go. And uh, overtime pack just because again we're missing the box filler. So uh, it'll be a random year. Uh, don't know quite what year yet. So uh, three times on this. Once, twice, and third time, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Okay, so that wraps things up for tonight's break. Um, let me go ahead and get that change there. That wraps things up for tonight's break. Uh, overall, like honestly, solid. Uh, again, no box filler. That is our third straight case without one, which is very very strange um but i mean i think you'd rather have the caprice off of, out of 50 over that it'd just be nice to get both uh the laugh program of excellence really nice card but yeah uh thank you everyone for coming out tomorrow we've got basketball and then yeah next week's breaks are gonna be fun we'll be running probably running this break again so uh yeah uh see you tomorrow night or next week and take care have a good weekend well it's not the weekend yet but if you don't join us tomorrow have a good weekend so uh yeah See you next time.